Hi, my name is Mario Windor, and I'm a student at CSU Pueblo, Colorado. I'm a part-time Flash animator student. I'll be teaching you today the basics of Macromedia Flash. We'll be using Macromedia Flash 2004, and I'll be teaching you the basic button functions. Now, when you get to the first screen that Flash shows you once you open it up, go ahead and click on New Flash Document. And then once the file opens, it'll open up to show you two things. It's going to show you the stage. That's the space where you'll place all the animation that you'll be doing, and any of the, any of the drawings or illustrations. It'll also show you the timeline. You'll notice that at the top, it looks kind of like piano keys. It starts uh, with the words layer one, That's because you're on layer one, the first layer you'll be working with. Now I'm just going to place a circle on the middle of the stage, so we can have something to work with. The first tool I'll be working with today is going to be the se direct selection tool. I should say the selection tool. It's going to be the first black arrow in the upper left hand corner. You'll notice that the selection tool has different icons depending on what you're mousing over. You'll notice that when you're moving something that can be moved as like an object, the uh, symbol for it will become the four, uh, four arrows uh, going in four different directions. And then when you're on the edge of an object, or a stroke, or a line, you might know it better as, you'll notice that the icon changes to sort of an arced circle, a uh, semicircle. Uh, when it changes to that, you know that you can manipulate the edge of an image. You see here I'm dragging away the edge of the circle, changing it. Uh, you can do quite a bit of advanced um, modeling this way. The next tool you're working with is the line tool, and as you might have guessed, it just draws straight lines. And it'll always have the color of the pencil there on the left-hand corner below the magnifying glass in the hand. That that is the uh, where you select the color of the lines you're using. Below that, the bucket is what you choose what the interiors of the objects you're making will be. Uh, also, when you're making lines, and you need that the ends of the lines to fit, what you can do is click on the snap toggle. Snap means that Flash will automatically connect the ends of the lines so that they make perfect connections. You notice that that snap to it, it stayed anchored to it while you were stretching. And you can do that to close the shape, and that's important when you uh, have to do a fill. You'll notice now that it's a closed object. When the edge is um, closed, you'll be able to use that to fill the object. Uh, the next tool we're going to be working with is the pen tool. Uh, if you're a illustrator, if you're the kind of person who enjoys hand drawing, this might be the tool for you. Uh, what it can do is it can set anchor points and then from the anchor points stretch a line. Now mind you when you get to the end and you've made a circle all the way around it will create an object just like the circle. Watch. See these anchor points are also fully uh, editable that if you needed to stretch them and move them you'd be able to do that. So you can still stretch these edges but there's another way to do that, of course. You can always use the... So like, I, let's just say the sub-selection tool. We'll get into that pretty soon. Uh, the object the next tool you're seeing me use that now is going to be the circle tool. Uh, this is basically what just what it sounds like. It'll create circles for you of different sizes. Now mind you, if you hold shift, it'll make a uh, perfect circle for you. But if you need a more oval shape, you can go with that as, as well. Now uh, the circle is composed of two parts, a stroke and a fill. You can select either one. You can either select the edge being the stroke or the line around it or the fill so you can manipulate them separately. Double click on either one of them to select both at once. Okay, we're going to be using the pencil tool next. Now the pencil tool is basically assisted freehand drawing. Now you see the first line that I drew, I had a little bit of a pointed arc to it. Uh, you'll notice that it was automatically straightened, that there wasn't really the line that I drew, because that's an option. You see, uh, Flash can automatically straighten your lines, depending if you need more angular lines of what you're doing. It also has the option to automatically smooth lines. Now, uh, pay attention to the line that I draw, that it's going to have a marked arc in it, a point very similar to the top uh, line. Look at that. And watch, it automatically smooths it. 
you'll find that this can be very, very helpful if you're drawing a lot of stuff that needs to have smooth lines, smooth, um, mathematically smooth lines. And then ink, the last one here uh, is basically the just as you draw it, that flash will draw it just the same way without a lot of alterations. Uh, in that one's case, the angle was a little steep and the line was long, that's why it altered it, but normally it won't uh, alter it at all. All right, the next tool we're going to be working with is going to be the ink bottle tool. Uh, you may have used a tool similar to this in pro programs like Microsoft Word. It's actually a formatting painter, meaning that an object that you had selected before, it can paint the attributes of it to other objects. You notice that the two circles I've placed on the stage have thicker lines or rather strokes around them than usual. What you can do is change one of these to, or start out as one of these as having thinner lines or thicker, depending on where you start. Then you use the ink bottle tool to paint its attributes to another object. You see I'll go back and I'll change the stroke on this circle to one or the, you know, the standard. And then because I was working with that last, the ink bottle will remember that. I select it and then another object and watch. You'll notice that the stroke changes thickness. There it is. It's changed from the size 4 thickness to the size 3. And the next tool we'll be working with is the eyedropper tool. This tool basically has one purpose. What you do is you take it, click on the interior or actually any color on the screen. I uh, do remember though that it only selects colors one pixel at a time so that you can uh, take on the fill color of this circle or any other color or shape on the uh, on your entire screen. I should say anything within flash. Now I'm going to change the uh, fill on this circle so you can see how this works. Uh, let's see. You'll go back to the uh, eyedropper tool, take on the blue. You notice that it fills up your fill color. And then you can do that to change anything that you need to. Now we'll be working with the sub selection tool. Now this tool has different functions in different softwares. In Flash, the sub selection tool allows you to select the anchor points of the vector image that you're working with. Now remember that vector graphics are composed of basically lines and anchor points. When you adjust the anchor points, you're able to manipulate the lines as well. Their arc, their curvature, it's all editable using these. I'll zoom in a little bit to show you exactly what's going on. You see you select on the white arrow at the top of the screen, you, that would be the one on the right side, and then you click inside a shape or any object that you have, and you'll notice that there are green dots appear all over it. This is like looking at the bones or the skeleton of what make it up. Now if you drag one of those little uh, lines that are on the sides of the little anchor point dots, you can manipulate the curve. The ways to, those lines are going to be the keys to doing the manipulation. You notice that you can drag out those uh, edges, uh, those ends uh, of the anchor points. You can drag them out further away to adjust the curvature, and then you can do that for each and every one of those. The next tool we'll be working with will be the lasso tool. Now, the lasso tool is the same as it would be in Photoshop if you have more experience in that. That you can select sections of what you're working with depending on how you have it selected. Now, if it's a uh, fully editable image like this, you'll see that you can just circle and grab whatever you need to. And that uh, object, because it's changed color and become uh, covered with the dots, you'll be able to see that it's fully editable. And did you notice that when I used the transform tool, that the selection was fully editable aside from the object? And the next tool we're going to be working with is going to be the text tool. You'll notice that it's the letter A icon in the on your tool palette. You click on that, then click on your stage and you're going to be able to add in letters to what you're doing, a text. Now, mind you, you're not limited to text that you can type in in Flash, that you can bring in text from lots of different sources, including files from like Microsoft Word, WordPad, that sort of thing. Uh, also, you can manipulate this text, changing size, color, font, uh, kerning, uh, other advanced um, typesetting features. Also, you can rotate the text and even animate the text. So Flash is very versatile when it comes to the text tool. Okay, the next tool we're going to be working with, let me just change the stage size so you can see all the stage at once. Uh, let's see, it's going to be a very important tool to you depending on what type of art that you produce. It, you can, with this tool, uh, draw a lot.